Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude, and today's deck opening is going to be for Keith Philbin. Wish him good luck. Let's see. Last deck was pretty interesting. If you did not see the video, had a Fangtooth Cavern with 21 Amber, and that was being not generous, but conservative towards that total. So I think that deck is going to do pretty well for Chain Bounds. Red Archon. First house is Logos. Second house is Shadows. And the third house is Sorion, the one that struts from currency, okay? And look at all those legs, that makes it easy to get away from it, and got some like claw-like hands up top, kind of a crab-looking monster of sorts. All right, good luck to you. Okay, starting off with Shadow's Master Plan, it's an artifact, Amber W play it. Put a card from your hand face down underneath it. Omni, play the card under Master Plan, destroy it. Great way to play cards out of house. Safe house, it's an artifact, Amber W play it. Action, archive a friendly creature from play. Let's actually see some play effects in this deck. Borrow, Amber W play it, take control of an enemy artifact. While under your control, it belongs to House Shadows. This is a really cool card, big fan of this. Taking Library of the Damned, Screaming Cave, just a lot of great targets for this card. Tempting offer, Amber W play it. It enhanced the capture pip. Return an enemy creature to its owner's hand. If you do, your opponent gains an amber. Red Penny, one power. Play Steel and Amber when it's destroyed. Shuffle into your deck. Okay, that goes good with the safe house. That way you don't have to rely on drawing it again. Opportunist. It's an upgrade. Amber W. Play it. This creature gains Elusive. Play this creature. Captures an Amber from its opponent. Nexus. Three power Elusive. Reap. Use an enemy artifact as if it were yours. I gotta say, it seems like most decks out of this box have had great artifact control. And this just adds, a, oh, another one. Two Nexus in this deck. Very cool. Mutant Cut Purse. Three power. Enhanced three damage pips. Mug, Amber W plate, move one Amber from a creature to your pool. Deal two damage to that creature. Look over there with a damage pit. Deal two damage to a creature. If it is not destroyed, steal an Amber. Okay, very nice. Francis the Economist, three power skirmish. Fight, each player gains an Amber. And now we're on to Sorion's Tertiate, Amber W plate with a damage pip. Destroy one third of all enemy creatures and one third of all friendly creatures, rounding up each time. I have this card in a few of my decks, and I have to say I like it quite a bit. This with the enhanced damage pip just makes it that much better, being able to pop the ward first to get rid of an annoying creature your opponent may have. Pterodactyl, 12 power, interest play is stunned, only deals 4 damage when fighting. Before the fight, deal 4 damage to each neighbor of the creature Pterodactyl fights. Siren Horn, it's an upgrade, Amber W play it. This creature gains before the fight, move 1 Amber from this creature to the creature it fights. Sorion Egg, Amber W play it, enhanced with the damage pip, 1 power, 5 armor, it cannot fight or reap. Omni, discard the top two cards of your deck. If you discard any Sorian creatures this way, put them into play ready, give them three plus one power counters, and destroy Sorian Egg. This is a pretty good card, especially if you get like Foss the Greater or some of the other kind of smaller Sorian creatures, bumping them up to like six and seven power with the great effects attached to them. I hope we do see something like Foss the Great in here. Curious Source, it's an artifact with a capture pip. Each creature with amber on it gains destroyed. Move one amber from this creature to the most powerful enemy creature. City State Interest, each friendly creature captures an Amber. Spoils of Battle, Amber Never You Play It, a friendly creature captures an Amber. Each creature with Amber on it captures an Amber from its opponent. Pretty good Amber Control card. Hold on here though, we have two creatures so far in Sorion's. One of them just puts others into play. Let's get some more creatures in here. Oh, another Spoils of Battle. Uh-oh. Sagittarius Gaze, Amber Never You Play It, enhance the damage pip. Play, exalt a damaged creature. Gala Tops, 12 power, only deals 4 damage when fighting. Whew, glad to see at least a creature. Chant of Hubris, Amber W. Play it. Move 1 Amber from a creature to another creature. Beware of the Ides, Amber W. Play it. Deal 23 damage to a creature in the center of its controller's battle line. Oh man, so there is now just 2, 3 creatures? Gosh. That is not necessarily what you want to see in a Saurian house. We're typically looking for a lot more creatures. And then a few effects kind of like this here. Oh, that does finish it off. But look who it is. It's Odd Claude with a damage pip. Five power action. If your opponent has an odd amount of amber, steal an amber. Oh, a second one of those. Positron Bolt. Amber W. Play it. Deal three damage to a flank creature, two to its neighbor, and one to the second creature's other neighbor. Titan Engineer. Six power. While it is not on the flank, keys cost plus one amber. Cards that increase key costs are always good. Ooh, a second one of those. Standardized Testing. Destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. Ever instant principle. Each player loses half their amber, rounding down the loss. Gain one chain. Diametric charge. Amber on every plate. Deal one damage to a creature with a two damage splash. Daughter. Two power elusive. During your draw card, step refill your hand to one additional card. Great card to see as always. Oh, another one of those. 
Oh, 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 oh my gosh. A third one, and we got a glimpse of the card behind it. I didn't see it, but I just saw it sticking up. Wow, this deck has three daughters in it. I don't know if that makes up for the lack of Soryon creatures, but that's pretty cool. And the final card was Auto Encoder. It's an artifact. After a card is discarded from your hand, archive the top card of your deck. Hmm, I don't think we really had any ways to discard cards other than just calling a house and discarding them. Uh, no additional effects that allowed us to discard cards. But it would be pretty cool if we could somehow get the Sorion house out of this deck, turn this into a two-house deck, and that'd be pretty strong. All right, let's get our Amber up. Those three daughters are sweet, by the way. All right. So, kind of light there. The Sorions are probably going to have quite a bit of Amber just because we didn't have as many creatures in it. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's kind of the Amber House in a weird way. Pull that up. Opportunist, Rad Penny, very nice, especially since we do have that safe house. And Master Plan. Looks like the Amber Count's going to be okay. We do know Logos is lacking. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That is way better than I was anticipating. 19 Amber is very strong. Let's get our Amber Control up as always next. Almost could put Safe House up there just because of the Rad Penny. Being able to archive it every Shadow's turn and then replaying it is pretty powerful. Look over there, of course. See, Siren Horn is taking Amber we have already captured and giving it back. Preventing our opponent from getting their own Amber, so that's pretty good. Let's see here. Efference in principle, very nice to have a big, powerful Amber Control card, two odd claws. City State Interest, yeah, Curious Source is taking away the Amber we get on our creatures, okay. Won't really count this because it's kind of hard to count this in Amber Control, but just know it is helping out. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, kind of 12, very nice, wow. Let's go ahead and see the creature count now. I know the Sorions are low. We checked that out. It feels like Shadows was okay. Logos, we had quite a few because we had, well, three daughters plus two odd clods. Two Titan Engineers as well. So yeah, Logos is the creature house in this deck. Let's see. Ooh, poor, poor Sorions. Oh, check out those three daughters. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful cards. Oh yeah, Shadows had quite a bit. All right, so let's count them up. One, five, ten. 15? Wait, 15? Oh, wow. Okay, so that means there was an average of six across the other houses. Let's actually look at that. How many did each other house have? Let's see. Let's put the shadows there. Yeah, I thought there was quite a bit of logos. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in logos. And five in shadows. Okay, respectable. Not bad at all. It's really just a shame. Wow, think about... The Soyon Egg here. It has a very low odds of hitting these creatures, so I guess in a weird way is going to push your deck cycling, but it's not really targeted cycling, so you're not going to be able to decide what's going in your discard pile or what's going in your hand, so we can't really say it's great, but it does help us if we've already played the better cards, get to them sooner again. I don't know, it's an odd one. We might actually, let's see, the safe place. Man, I'm hoping we just, with the auto encoder, as I said, we just got to be able to get rid of the Soyon creatures. Let me make sure there was no discard effects across the creatures. I don't think there was. No harm in checking it out. Yeah, I don't see any there. Go back through the rest, I guess, the actions and things. No, there's nothing allowing us to just get some free cards archived off the top. Before we bring up the board control, there is a card I want to at least think a little bit about. Let's get it up here. Master Plan. Let's see. Okay, so Master Plan. I gotta tell you guys, one of my favorite types of cards to put under Master Plan is something like an Everett's in Principle, because obviously you know when you want to play the Everett's in Principle, but there's times where your opponent, if they all of a sudden target your Master Plan with, say, like a Poltergeist, they get to use your artifact, they play the card underneath, they don't know what's under there, so it could really give them a big surprise. Yeah, I think that's probably the best target for the Master Plan. Let's see... Uh, any of these Amber Control cards are acceptable, kind of, as long as you know your opponent isn't going to have Poltergeist or something in their deck where they're the ones that can pop it. Let's look at the board control. Let's move, get past the creatures. Let's see. Okay, so that will do some damage. Uh, returning, I guess, is a temporary. Tertiate is the best one we have in here by far. Beware of the eyes. Okay, Positron Bolt's very nice. And standardized testing. Man, I gotta say, 
Logos is definitely the best house in this deck, no doubt, and Sorion's is the weakest. So actually, let's pull the Sorion ones up first. Okay, yeah, see, just kind of a weaker house, sadly. But you do have the best board removal, in my opinion, for this deck, which is Tertiate. Beware the Ides, mess with your opponent's board, try and get a certain creature into the center, dealing 23 damage to it, it's going to pretty much take out any creature that your opponent's going to have. Standardized testing's pretty nice. Diametric charge, yeah, the Positron Bolts. Big fan of the Logos in this deck. Very, very nice. It's a great, great house. These three daughters can really just change the game. Having seven or eight cards at the end of every turn is so powerful. We don't have any ways to protect it, sadly. Uh, there was no, like, warding or taunts in here, but still really good. Titan Engineers, yeah, man, the Logos is just top-notch in this deck. A decent amount of our capture, unfortunately, did have to go onto creatures. And other than, like, the Titan Engineers, if we look at the other creatures here, got some two powers, okay, five's okay. I'm not really expecting much from the Sorians, but at least these guys are bigger. Same with the Sorian Egg, I guess, thanks to the five armor. So if we do have to rely on Captured Amber, these guys are better than I was initially thinking. Shadows is always going to have the smallest creatures. Yeah, three, one, three, 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 yeah. So... I guess that is some good news. Your Soyon creatures that you did have just so happened to be two 12 powers and one creature that's pretty hard to get off the board. You need at least six damage to take them off in one turn. Obviously, the deck would function way better if there was two or three more Soyon creatures in here. I don't care what they were. Any Soyon creatures, replacing any of those actions or artifacts with Soyon creatures would have taken this deck up to a whole new level. I think overall the deck's pretty good. You should have some fun with this on uh, Chain Bounds, TCO, whatever you're going to play. It's not the most competitive deck, but honestly, I think for competitive nowadays, we need decks that have three very, very strong houses or at least some sort of gimmicks or combos to push the overall power of the deck up because maybe all of a sudden you can burst the six amber in one turn. You kind of need those nowadays. I want to thank everyone for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time.